Hey, good morning, you guys. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this planet. We are going to have some fun this morning. Hey, it's just you and me. No other guests. I just want to talk to you. You know, I didn't even plan this until this morning, and I thought, you know, I feel a little empty not getting out there and talking to you guys. So I figured I would give you kind of a unique session here, which is I'm going to go over... Um, some key points out of my book, Create Tools for <laughs> from Seriously Talented People to Unlock Your Creative Life. I'm going to go over like what I consider to be the most important lesson in the whole book. But also, I want to just answer your questions. I'm going to leave a lot of time for that. And let's just see what happens, okay? This is just about helping you guys become more creative, which is my whole goal. My goal with this channel, with AYP, is to provide you the very best content that you're going to find on YouTube anywhere to help you advance your photography. I think you would agree with me. This is really different than whatever else is out there. And... I need you guys to help me, help me help you. Okay, I'll talk about that in a minute. But so far, hey, we've got uh, Morgan from Athens, Georgia. Awesome. Ashu from New Delhi. Isn't that amazing? You know, I'm just finishing a book called Siddhartha. I read it, I think, three or four times. It's um, by an author named Herman Hesse, and about it's about uh, the journey of someone who was alive during the time of Buddha in India. It's a very fascinating book. I'm right at the end of it. Another one, you guys from India, I love it. Uh, so you're back here, Sandy. And then Tad from London. I've spent a lot of time in London. I love it. Uh, I took my whole family over there, and I think 2007, we rented a flat near Kensington. We had such a good time. I have many, many friends in London. Um, and Paco, hello from Mexico. Que bueno. I've got a lot of stories about Mexico. I'm not going to be able to tell them all today. We've got Steve from Australia. I've got to go there and surf. I'm embarrassed to say I have never been to Australia and I haven't surfed there and I have so many friends who have. It's it's a, a longing I have in my heart. And then we have, um, I'm going to mess up your name, uh, Mr. Leish, okay, sorry. And you're from Boston Stroke, UK. I don't know where that is. I love the UK. And we've got Guido from Germany. Awesome. You're locked up. Sorry, I know we all are. And we've got Anka. Hello again, Anka. And we've got Jao from Portugal. Wow, Johnny from Vancouver. We're all in the same boat, you guys. And, you know, as far as humanity, I think this is the first time we've ever, ever, ever had this situation where we're all in it together. And that's the only positive thing. I think from this, we can actually build some strength and some unity because we really have to have compassion for no matter where you are, no matter what's going on, we're all facing the same thing. And that's actually, you know, unfortunately, it is a valuable lesson, not unfortunately, but it is a valuable lesson that's being born out of this very difficult time. Okay, help me help you. We need a lot more people, you guys. I think you'd all agree. Will you please, when this show is over, I need you to use your fingers with your social media. I mean, really, I need you to be ninjas. I need you to be my evangelists and tell your friends. Send out tweets. Put it on your Instagram. Put it on your Facebook. Go through your address book and just send people the message that Dude, where you ought to be at this time every day, 10 o'clock California time, and it's whatever time, wherever you are, you should be on AYP because they will help you advance your photography. No kidding. Okay, we're going to talk about creativity. We're going to advance our creative skills. And this, again, is from my book that I published in July on my birthday, July 23rd. I interviewed... 
12 very creative people, including Chris Burkhardt, who we heard from just recently. I interviewed all sorts of different people from different backgrounds to find out what is it that makes them creative. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about some of these things. I'm not going to go through the whole book. Okay, I'm just going to talk to you maybe 15 minutes. Then we'll take your questions. So here we go. What is creativity? I'm going to ask you these questions. You've heard me say this, but you know, Socrates taught, he, he's considered the father of modern philosophy, probably the, the greatest philosopher who ever lived, but he taught not by teaching and telling people things, but by asking questions. And you'll remember the best teachers you had were not the ones that just crammed data down the back of your head or in your wherever. They asked you questions. They got you to look. They got you to examine. And that's what I'm going to do here. And that's what I do with the book. So what is creativity? What does it mean to you? I can't hear your answers, but you can think them at me. I'm kind of telepathic. So if you think me your answer, I might get it. Is there a pattern to creativity? Have you ever wondered that? Is it just an accident that some people seem more creative than others? Or is there some kind of pattern? If there's a pattern, maybe you can learn it. Maybe you can increase your own creativity. And how can you enhance it? I'm going to tell you that right now. And how can it be strengthened? I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay, so let's, let's just dive into this here. So I presented this... Uh, what I'm talking to you about. Now there is a quick start guide uh, that you can download if you go to my website. You know, I'm a one man band here. I don't have Jared this morning. He's taking a little breather. Uh, I'll put this link on later. You can download this for free. And it's a quick start guide for creativity. It's a pretty cool little thing. I, I want you to have it. So my goal for you with this short little session is I want to increase your ability to do your creative activity. Creativity isn't about thinking, it's about doing. And that's really the secret to improving your photography or any kind of creative activity is to do it. <laughs> okay, you're never going to get better unless you get out and do it and you share it and you just keep learning. I mean, Listen, I just decided I was going to do these used, used YouTube live streams, and I kind of fumbled around at the beginning. I don't know if you saw that, but I thought I was fumbling. And I'm learning every day how to do a little bit better job. That's my goal as an artist, as a creative, is, is to learn and constantly be doing something better. This was an Instagram photograph, by the way, taken, uh, I mean, an Instagram. This is an iPhone photo stopped by the side of the road. And I did a little processing. I never release anything without processing it. And my go-to, if I'm going to edit on my iPhone, I use Lightroom Mobile. I love Lightroom anyway, but I use Lightroom Mobile, and I always tweak my photographs. Just I never put them out there without some kind of tweaking. So that was done. I don't think that actually was done in mobile. That was probably done on my desktop. One of the cool things about Lightroom Mobile is you can sync it with your desktop. So whatever's on your phone, you can pull it in and then you edit it and then it goes back to your phone. And remember the days you had to upload only through your phone and Instagram. Now there's a, a creator suite so we can actually upload stuff from our desktops, which is really handy. Okay. There are five, count them, stages to creativity. If you've heard this before, do not tune out. You need to hear it again. I think I've told you that it's been determined in education, and this is by some pretty smart people, that you have to hear something nine times before you really get it. And think about it. You hear something once, eh, yeah, right. You hear it again, eh, whatever. You hear it again, eh, and it starts to kind of click in after you realize that somebody is really trying to teach you something they're going to repeat it over and over again you have to hear things repetitively so there's five stages visualization is at the center of that and that's what we're going to talk about this morning it's seeing with your mind's eye it's getting the image in your mind before you create it whether it's a photograph a film a poem 
a, a birthday cake, a, a card, <laughs> whatever it is, decorating your house saying to somebody something creative and loving those are all visualized here first you get it in your mind then you do it then the next stage is you got to know your tools you've got to know if you're using a camera i love these cameras guys these are my this was one of my original yes i did use this this is called an argus c3 from the 60s this was the most popular camera of its time they call it the brick because it's just like a big solid piece of brick. But what made it so cool was you could focus, you could adjust your aperture and your shutter speed. And believe me, that was a big deal before that. It was all point and shoot. So whatever tool you're using, you got to know it. You got to get, you've heard Bob Holmes say this. Don't let the camera get in the way of your photography. You got to know it so well that it never gets in the way. Okay. Knowing your tools, working your craft, do not think about it, get out and do it. And if you have to go around your own home, you know, you've heard some of the photographers talking about this. If you're completely locked down, learn light in your own home. One way to see, you got to see what the light is doing. It's coming in, like in this case, I've got a window here. It's got a shade on it. It's like a big soft box. Where is the light? Where is it coming from? I've got another LED light over here. Okay. You look at light, you see light, and you work your craft, which means take photographs, not take them, make them. Okay. If you want to write a song, write songs. Don't sit around and think about it. Get out there and do it. Biggest mess, biggest mistake you can make is just letting a day go by without creating something. Don't do that. I mean, in my given day, I'm doing these YouTube live streams. I'm putting up stuff on Instagram. I'm planning my next video. I'm talking to people about creative stuff. You know, what you put your attention on, you get. If you put your attention on miserable, difficult, horrible things, you're going to feel miserable, horrible, and difficult. Take a break from that. Put your attention on creativity. Okay, you work your craft. When you come back, you edit. Don't edit while you're working your craft. Don't sit there and have your little voices going, I'm not very good at this. This really sucks. I'm the stupidest photographer that ever lived. I really don't know what I'm doing. You know what? Guess what? Even the pros have those thoughts. I have those thoughts all the time. How stupid. Oh, this isn't worth posting. I mean, this is a cliche. Who's going to want to see another sunset? Why am I doing this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bap, 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 bap. Voices all over the place. Ignore them. It's in my book. These guys talk about that. These are some of the most successful creatives you'll ever want to meet. They're talking about it. Don't listen to those voices. Don't listen to those voices. Okay. So don't edit while you're shooting. Come back. Do that as its own separate thing in the cycle. Editing has a place. Like I told you, I edit in Lightroom. But I don't edit while I'm shooting. And you shouldn't edit while you're doing anything. You should just let it flow, come back and edit it later. And then you get out and share it. Lots of ways besides sharing on social media. I want you to share though. <laughs> I want you to share AYP. But there's a lot of other ways to share your stuff. Make prints. Make prints of your of your best work. You know, this isn't even my best photograph, but this is this is my wife, you know, very pretty. It's in a frame. It's sharing. I'm sharing it with myself. I want to see her. So put it and I kind of like the little frame thing. You know, we, got, we sometimes think about, wow, we got to make it like huge on the wall. But just remember, there's a whole you can share it any size, but it is good to put it in a frame and put it somewhere where you and other people can see it. That's sharing. You can make books. You've heard uh, Dan Milner talk about making books with Blurb. Bay Photo, who has really been a great sponsor for us, they'll help you make books. Do it. Okay, that's sharing. All right, so those are the five stages of creativity. Let's go on and look at some other stuff.
the whole key is visualization. What does visualization mean? It means the formation of a mental picture of something. And, you know, this is one way you can visualize. It helps to do that when you go out. Use your hands as a frame. Okay, you can also do this, you know, but whatever you do, it actually helps you to go, wow, that's a photograph right there. This is pretty cool. I'm going to go out and visualize every day. You have to do that. You can visualize music. You can visualize a poem. It's not just visual, meaning your eyes. You can visualize anything. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. This is a photograph of me near my home, Big Sur, illustrating what it means to visualize, holding my hands up, visualizing the photograph. Do that. Drill it. It's really important. This photograph, um, actually, it's weird. I took this photograph when I was 13 years old, and it's been my most popular photograph over the years. <laughs> I can't. I set the bar too high with this one. These are some friends that were jumping off sand dunes, a sand dune at sunset. They're backlit. That's why it's silhouetted. I had the idea. Here's. I'm going to show you kind of a different view. This is my um, contact strip. So for those of you guys who've never used negatives, what this is, this is film that comes out of your camera. You develop it, and it's in a negative form, meaning it's the opposite. I should show you what that means. But you print it on a sheet of paper, and then you can pick out which ones you want. And that's called a contact sheet. So you can see that I took some other, you know, side images of these guys, but they didn't really do anything for me. So I said to them, hey, you guys, I, I'm going to stand down here. I directed them. It's totally okay to direct your people in your shots, by the way. I directed them. I stood down below them and I said, look, when I say go, I want you to run and jump. And I had to press the shutter just at the right time because notice how it's a perfect arc. And notice what would happen a second later. It would have all fallen apart. I visualized it. I pressed the shutter at the right time. I didn't instantly, going back to this other one, you can see that it wasn't a silhouette, a complete silhouette. If you look at the right on the right there, you can see that it wasn't a, a perfect silhouette. And I did that in the dark room. I found out that I could make it a silhouette. And there you have it. That was my first visualization, age 13. Um, visualization applies to all forms of art. Let me see if I can get that so it's not there. Okay, there we go. It applies to any art form. The secret that artists and entrepreneurs, sports figures, all creative free thinkers have used for century. This is Salvador Dali. I don't know if you know who he is. Pretty amazing painter. I went to his house in Port Ligat, Spain. Anybody here from Spain? Okay, yes, uh, I'm going to mess up your name. Yosan, where are you from Spain? Anyway, I was in Port Ligat. I love Spain. We were in Barcelona. We were in, uh, we traveled all around, actually. We rented a car, drove from Barcelona up to the Pyrenees and then over to the coast. Stopped at Salvador Dali's home at Port Ligat. What a beautiful place that is. Oh, wow. I'm, I feel blessed because when I go out on a trip, I am, capt and you guys can do the same thing, but I am creating content for my books and I get to capture all this cool stuff and use it later on. Okay, one example of a non-visual um, visualization. That sounds funny, but visualization doesn't mean just with your eyes. So Brian Wilson, who really was the founder and the leader of the Beach Boys, if you're like me, he, they were a big group in my day. Uh, he visualized every instrument in a, uh, his album called Pet Sounds. It was a breakthrough album. He visualized all these weird different instruments. He heard it in his head, but there were things that never had been used before. Sleigh bells, Coke bottles, different things. He visualized it and he made a masterpiece. But it all, it all started with his own vision, his own thought. One way of strengthening your visualization, I'm sorry to say we're not going to museums today, but you can strengthen your visualization by, you can't go to a museum, but by getting out a book like this. There's a lot of 
There's a lot of original art in here. If you have books on your bookshelf, take time every day to read and look and just get inspired. I'm going to not recommend going to the internet. Stay off the internet for a while. Look at books if you can. If you don't have any books, okay, you got to go to the internet. You know, you're filling up your own well of inspiration. This is really important. That's one way you strengthen your visualization. And another thing is keep a notebook. I'm going to give you a specific exercise right now. This is this is a notebook I created. It's an AYP notebook. And it actually has um, inspiration in it, but it's also got a, a page here that tells you what to do when you look at art. Kind of cool. I'll give you a whole, I'll give you like, hey, look at it and write down these points. But I'm going to give you an exercise here, guys. Very pertinent to what's going on today. Does everybody have a notebook? <laughs> okay. You got to have a notebook. If you don't have a notebook, get one. If you can't get one, just get some, some pieces of paper and staple them together or whatever. But get a notebook. I want you to do this exercise. There's a lot of things you can do with your notebook. You can write your goals. You can write your dreams. But you can also handle what's worrying you and giving you problems. How do you do that, Mark? Okay. Here's how you do that. I want you to try this after we're done, and I want to hear about it. Make a short list on one of these pages, okay? Open up your notebook to a blank page and make a short list, okay, here. Short list, not a long list, of anything that's worrying you. Not hard today, right? Problems you're facing. Make a list of maybe five or six items. That's about it. And you'll find usually after you write out five or six, you, you kind of have put them, you, you put them on paper. That's really important. Now, what do you do? In another column, <clears throat> so let's say you write over here, leave a little space between them, by the way. So you write, you know, my biggest worry is the uncertainty of what my job is going to be like or my career. Ah, I agree. Whatever that is. Okay, you've written that down. I'm worried about my job. I'm worried about my career. And then you, you've you written down five things, okay? You tracking with me? Okay. Then over in this column here, write down how can you tackle that? What does that mean in English? Tackle means, I think it comes from the idea like when you're playing football, you tackle somebody. You you get in there and you handle it. You, 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 you deal with them. It means how can you handle it? What can you do about it? Okay, well, you're worried about your career. Watch our YouTube live from yesterday, which will be going up at 11 o'clock right after this show. Watch that because it's with Manuel Sarez, who's giving you several key things you can do about your career today. So that's an example. Write down what you have to do to, to do something about it. Because here's a little secret, guys. Just like I said, you got to get out every day and work your craft. If you do anything about what's worrying you, just the slightest little thing, you're going to improve it even a little bit. And many things in life are improved step by step by step. That's how you learn photography. That's how you learn anything. And that's how you learn to conquer your problems. Okay. Finally, at the end of every chapter, and by the way, listen, go to Amazon and get this book. It's in digital form. You can get the ebook. You can get the printed book. They're both got great stuff in here. And at the end of every chapter, I give you exercises that you could be doing right now at home that are going to help you improve your creativity. So these are questions, some of the questions I ask at the end of every chapter. What does visualization mean to you? Not what did I tell you it meant. What does it mean to you? Answer these silently. Like I said, I'm kind of telepathic. Give an example of this in your own life. Write that down. Do this in your notebook. When did you visualize something? Write that down. Um, write an example of a time you were inspired by something. What inspired you? Write it down. 
by work of art and it, you, you use it to create something of your own. These are just a real short little version of what's at the end of every chapter. I ask you questions and then I give you specific things that I want you to do. This is going to strengthen your ability to create. This is for real. I mean it. Okay. Well, there you guys go. That's my little uh, creative exercise. Now we're going to take up your questions. So I haven't been able to read these while I've been going through it. So give me your questions, you guys. I'm going to catch up with uh, Portugal, Vancouver, Johnny in Vancouver, uh, Serbia, Alexander. Wow, great name. Alexander came through your land a long time ago, I believe. Rafael from Tampa, uh, Victor from Portugal. Hello, you guys. Turbito, uh, hola, amigo, in Portugal. And uh, Hosan Lee from Spain, yes. Zhao, I actually started to work more on visualization part because of you, Mark. Thank you. I uh, saw a few of your videos and the ones with Bob did make me think more about it. I'm so glad to hear that because that is the key to improving your photography is visualization. And it takes on many forms. You visualize the image. You visualize what story you want to tell. You heard Chris Burkhardt say, always ask yourself, what is the story? What am I trying to tell here? Visualize that, then go out and capture it. Uh, and India, Morgan, yes. During mood sing swings, okay, here's a question, Sandy. During mood swings, sometimes creativity, how to refocus your attention? Yeah, it's really a discipline. Get off of whatever is causing you that mood swing and go on to doing something creative. And if you need to handle it, use that exercise I just gave you. Write it down. And then whatever's bugging you, upsetting you, or bothering you, just write it down. You know, there's something that happens when you take it out of your head and you put it into paper. Do you know what I mean? It actually immediately, there's an immediate separation. And then when you write down after that what you could do to handle it, that even improves it more. Okay. What other questions do you guys have? I'm going to... I'm going to tell you some things while you're asking those questions. But I told you, you know, you're getting really great content. I'm not asking you because I know you are. And I work really hard at this to find you some of the most amazing creatives that you're going to. Where else are you going to find National Geographic photographers giving away their secrets? <laughs> Ed Kashi, National Geographic, New York Times. I mean, the list of publications and honors that he's received just goes on and on and on. And you get to hear from him or from Bob Holmes or Dan Milner. You guys, I'm working for you. I am. I'm working to give you this data, to give it away. I need you to work for me. I really do, and I'm not kidding. We need to make this channel blow up. What I don't mean disappear. I mean move up into a whole new range by 10 times. Don't hoard it to yourself. It's going to be a better channel if we have more people on it. And the only way that's going to happen is by you and me. I can only do this so many times and say, hey, watch my channel. This is really cool stuff. It has to come from you. We believe things that we hear from other people. That's why people leave Amazon reviews. That's why people go to Yelp. That's why people tell their friends. When you tell other people they believe it, I need you guys to do that. Will you spend some time every day? Exercise your fingers. Tell them what you've got out and gotten out of it. That's the best way to tell people. Don't make up something, but you know, hey, look, you know, I was watching this and I really started to get what Mark is talking about, about visualization, and that's really improved my photography. Or it's improved my mental outlook, or whatever it's improved. Tell them, pass along your the things you've gained. Okay, here's something, uh, not really a question, but something I do. When I hit a wall, what I usually do is take pictures of the places and people I love. 
Wow, that's good. Usually that makes me get going again. Good thought, yes. Look into your archives, look into your own well of pictures and publish them if you want. You know, send send them to people. What you sow, you reap. What you reap, you sow. If you put out beauty into the world, if you put out creativity, you're going to get that back. Don't just sit there within yourself. Put it out. This is why I'm doing this with you guys every day. It, also, it actually helps me, but I know it's helping you too. So will you guys do that? I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over again. I, you know, I started this thing called the Good Karma Team. You're all in the Good Karma Team. <laughs> You're all part of the team here at AYP. I don't need to tell you special instructions or go to a certain website. All you have to do is share what you've gotten out of this with as many people as you can and tell them to tune in. We're basically on the air. We're putting up something every single day, either live at 10 a.m. or it, like tomorrow this will come out at 11. Just show up. Okay. And if there's any other questions, now's the time. Otherwise, I am going to wrap this up. This is going to be a little shorter than normal, half hour. And I love you guys. Thank you for showing up all around the world. Okay, so somebody just popped in a question. Good, Morgan. How do you get over your nerves when doing street photography? You just do it. You just get over it. There's a lot of ways to do street photography, too, by the way. Henry Cartier-Bresson, who is probably, in my mind, one of the greatest photographers ever, and he's definitely the greatest street photographer ever, look up his work. He didn't announce himself. He was a stealth photographer. He would just, he had a very small camera. It was this camera right here without the light meter on it. This is called a Leica. And he would just, you know, he'd, sh he'd show up, he'd see a photograph, he'd take the picture. And before I actually asked somebody who knew him, I said, what did he do? You know, how did he go up and ask permission? He says, no, he just captured the photograph and left quickly. The only way you get over your fear is to do it. That's simplicity in itself. Uh, Timothy, I've been going back through my archive as of late. So this example is spot on for me. Good, excellent. Um, I comment more than I ever did before, but I've been watching your videos and learning a lot for years. Good, tell people that, <laughs> okay. Help me help you, I mean it. That's excellent. People don't get a platform like this you provide to all of us. We're all thankful to you. Yeah, they get it. They just need to know more about it. Please consider a workshop internationally. That will be great. I would love to do that. Um, right now, this is, the, this is the international workshop. Listen, if people hear something enough times, they believe it. Like I told you, it takes nine times. They go, oh, Mark Silver, AYP. Oh, yeah, cool. Mark Silver, AYP. Oh, okay. They hear it nine times. They go, well, I better check this dude out. Okay. Um, Timothy said, when it comes to people in classic street photos, just get in there and be part of the moment. That's very true. Don't interfere. Yeah, I've only been told off twice in over 10 years. Yeah, I had somebody chase me with a broomstick. A couple, two people. It doesn't happen very often, but I respect that, and I stopped taking photographs. Okay, you guys, we're going to wrap this up. I love you. Thank you for joining us. What am I asking you to do as soon as we're over? What am I, what have I asked you to do? What have I asked you to do? Okay. <laughs> do that. Okay. Share your, what you've gotten out of this with at least 10 people. Okay. Uh, follow us on social. You've got my uh, Instagram handle there. Go to it and follow me. Subscribe if you haven't already done that. I'd be surprised if you haven't subscribed by now. Share, like, leave your comments. The video comes out tomorrow. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life. I love you guys. See you again soon. Leave your comments. Tell your friends. Adios, amigos.
Se la vaya bien. Con mucho gusto. Chao. Arigato. <laughs> Aloha in Hawaii. It's hello and goodbye. Aloha. I love you guys. Be well. <laughs>